This is the X cover girl. It's kind of like the ex-wife. It's kind of like the cover girl that husband didn't want her anymore. So husband got rid of her. And now this is the new dad or new husband, I should say. I don't know why I said dad, that's weird. Now that that's out of the way, this is Chris Stillwells. Obviously 65 C10. We get the year right for Mr. Scott Nelson. Um, so this truck was already done once. Um, I believe it went to SEMA before it was painted and with a wrap company and got a bunch of wraps on it throughout the week. And then it came back in pieces for Frank to paint, like literally I think the cab and some of the front sheet metal came and then that got painted and then that left and then the bed came and then that got painted and that left and then somebody else put it all together. Um, and then it was listed at an auction and with a reserve and didn't sell. And then it was sold privately to Chris. So now Chris is the new owner, drove it around for a little bit, realized some of the issues and we just built Shannon, a very similar truck that was blue and white C10 um, and they're like best friends. So he said, well, then I'll bring my truck to Jeremy and the guys over at Tray 5, have him rebuild my truck. So after that long winded intro, let's go over what's been done to the truck. First thing you see is the outside. This was painted years ago by Frank and the guys over at iCandy. Uh, this truck actually made a stint over to Saudi Arabia to go to that Riyadh auction, but did not sell. Some damage occurred while it was over there um to some of the paint work and stuff but chris didn't want to fix that because he doesn't want to put money into the paint right now he just wants to enjoy it and drive it so paint we didn't touch anything paint wise on this entire truck throughout the entire build um so the outside kind of looks the same i just lied to you though because we did paint the front and rear bumpers we didn't frank painted the front and rear bumpers so everything else however has been changed under the hood we have a don hardy built 550-ish horsepower LS3. Came complete from, from him with the build specialties pulley setup and AC and everything. That's another thing this truck didn't have before. It didn't have AC. With the pulley setup, we have AC compressor and then we did rest of mod under the dash too, but we'll talk about that when we get inside. We did the ABS power brakes, master cylinder on it. We did the heart fab tubs. So under here, Frank painted those. The headers that were on this truck were not the best either. So they burnt the paint on the firewall. So rather than painting the firewall, we needed a catch can anyway. So we used the catch can covered up where the paint was burnt. So don't tell anybody that that's covered up. But this truck is also, if you can notice at the suspension, this is on a GSI chassis now. It's got an air cleaner on it. So we don't have to build an intake, nothing like that. And then the whole engine, everything along with the wheels and a bunch of suspension parts is all ceramic, coated in burnt bronze. So the other big change on the outside of this truck that you'll notice is we changed the wheels also. So we went to a set of shot wheels, 22 eight and a half up front. And then we did a 22 nine in the back. And the reason we kept it a little bit narrower is because we didn't want to mess with the tubs that were already in the truck. So with the nine inch wide, we knew that we would fit, knew there wouldn't be any rubbing issues. We still gave it a, about as deep of a lip as we could. I think the bumpers and the wheels, even if you recognize the truck, you know something's changed. Um, back here, we had to rebuild the entire bed floor. We reframed a lot of the bed, added some reinforcement, and then we built a new opening. Just like what we do a lot of the times here, you can't even tell this bed floor opens until you go inside and you hit the, uh, the code of digital. And then the middle of the bed floor lifts. We use the LS fab hinges on this in conjunction with the Dakota digital actuators. And the reason we use those rather than like a like a piano hinge or anything like that is because when this thing opens, it actually opens up and out. So we can keep that gap to the back, or I guess that'd be the front wall of the bed super tight. So it's like you saw when it's closed, you can't even really tell that the bed floor opens, but let's talk about what's underneath here. So this is basically how we got the truck. Other than we cleaned up a little bit of wiring, but the tanks were mounted here and the hard lines were done. These are three gallon VT tanks, which means the valves are in there. So like we have the two front valves and the two rear valves feeding those airlines. And then we re, we re plumbed it from there out, but we wanted to leave this alone because Chris likes this. It's kind of neat to see the stuff when you open the tailgate. Once the bed floor is open, you can see all the GSI chassis under here. Everything is powder coated by Pat Ghost Powder. Crazy Chris wanted to do white. 
Um, but, you know, Chris and Shannon, those guys up in Northern California have a lift in their garage, so they can keep the white nice and clean. We did build this panel. Part of the reason we built this is because when the bed floor was open, you could see all the plumbing and everything that came off these hard lines. So we wanted to conceal that. And then at the same point in time, it helps conceal some of the fuel lines and the wiring. And then we just extended the uh, gas tank filler up to the top and put this cool billet filler for your fuel, which has an O-ring seal. So once you break that O-ring seal, it's easy. But that's our new fuel filler. So rather than having to lean all the way down into the bed and, uh, and fill it up way down underneath there, we moved it up here. And then we also located the AccuAir ECU. So this is on an AccuAir system. So same company that makes the tanks. They make what's called the E-Level. If you're unfamiliar with that, basically what it is is it's mechanical height sensors at each wheel. So the height sensor located at the wheel has to be calibrated and has to move a specific amount. But once we set all that up, it's as easy as getting in this inside, pressing button two, comes up to right height. Um, the only other thing to talk about back here is we have a curry axle. Um, Frank painted, when he painted the bumpers, painted the center section and the drive shaft. So everything on the on the chassis is all painted or powder coated. Um, Borla exhaust after the ultimate headers. So as always, we try to get an X pipe in there. Our mufflers are mounted in the back. Um, the only thing we didn't talk about back here is the fire compressors. We remounted those. So those are now hanging off the bed underneath here on some rubber isolated mounts. So they're, they're not very loud at all really. But other than that, kind of standard treatment for us all the wiring, all the plumbing, all the stuff that makes this truck run and drive, we hide as much as we can. But if you did need to service it, three screws, pull that panel out, all the AccuAir stuff's there, um, fuel pumps right underneath there. So it makes it easy while making it clean. Bedwood is some custom wood that Marquet cut us. In closing, it's as easy as pressing a button. And you don't have to sit there and hold the button. You don't have to wait for it inside, you can press the button, walk back out, and it'll close and it'll stop all on its own. Inside this truck, again, a lot of this was left alone, but we did do some work. Inside was already painted. Frank actually painted this back when the truck was built. This seat was already done, so it's got kind of a cool look, houndstooth, but Chris is nuts and did white. We added the Resto Mod Air. The truck went back over to Steve, and he built this skirt under the dash that we like to use, put some of the same houndstooth in it so it matches the seat. Built a little tiny center console because this thing used to have a manual five speed. In order to not have to redo all the carpet, we put a, had Steve put a quick little center console in here and we left it a console shifter. So that's now an automatic, but it's a low car console shifter. Had to rebuild the kick panels because of the AC lines on the other side. The kick panels that were in here had two speakers in them, but the design previously interfered with the AC lines that we have now. So Steve rebuilt the kick panels, new grill, all that fun stuff. Already had Dakota digital gauges in it. They're the gauges we use, we like them. We put a new retro sound radio in it. And then this is where the AccuAir was previously. Works out great, so we left it there. Door panels are untouched, glass is untouched. Oh, horn works. Oh yeah, this is a new column and steering wheel too. All right, so this one's kind of short and sweet because we didn't have to paint the outside. We didn't do much interior, but this thing is leaving tomorrow morning, heading back up to Northern California. Um, we'll have it in our booth along with Shannon's truck and probably one or two others at this C10 slowdown on August 5th. So if you want to come see us, shirts, hats, maybe we'll have our new shirts out by then of Shane's truck. I haven't shown you guys those yet, but we did some shirts with Shane's twin turbo red truck. But uh, that's it, I guess. I don't have a good way to wrap this one. We tried to go shoot this yesterday and we got kicked out by security. So press for time because it's leaving. Hope you liked the video anyway. Uh, hope it's informative. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. Subscribe to the channel. Hit the notifications bell so you don't miss new videos. And uh, hope you enjoy, Chris. See you guys later. Uh, well, we talked about how the paintwork and shit was done, right? Yeah. So we'll just say the only other things you'll notice on the outside. Yeah. So we talked about bumpers yeah. right here. Yeah. So I'll go back to here and we'll say the bumpers.